Greetings. Thanks for joining me again for another YouTube video. This, I'm sure if you have a Starlink or you're interested in a Starlink, you've probably seen a dozen videos on the unboxing and the installation. And that's exactly where I've been. I decided a little over a year ago, it's been 14 months to pull the trigger on this particular project. I have a internet provider, it's not cable. I did a test this morning, and as you can see here, the speed is only 19 upload, actually, excuse me, 19 download, and I think it's 1.9, almost 2 upload. So that's that's acceptable. I mean, the internet works. Uh, I, I get Netflix, and I get Prime uh, Video over the internet. So all of that works, and it's acceptable, but <clears throat> it's just not fast enough especially like these YouTube videos that are uploaded, they're just not fast enough, it takes hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this now, and I'm gonna go to the install, and we're gonna see what kind of speeds we get after all that's completed. Well, I guess the very first thing I'm gonna do is unbox this ethernet cable. It's the smallest of the boxes. Got a nice little diagram in here. Looks like they plug this in here just to keep it clean. I do believe that this is where my ethernet cable will go into. And this is where my lead from the Starlink antenna will go into. And where this goes, this goes into the Starlink router. Next is the mount. Got, uh, it's called a Starlink flashing mount kit. Goes underneath shingles, it looks like. Not sure, this might be a template. Trace around it. Or it might just be something to hold all this in. I'm thinking it might be a template. This, I believe, I've watched a few YouTube videos and I believe that this is going to go here after everything is installed and then the cables will go on top of here and the cover will go on top of that. Some mounting hardware. And now for the big guy. Maybe we can turn this sideways. Looks like there was a cover on here. Now this is something that I'm, I have no use for. Uh, I'm not sure where I'm gonna ever use this, but because of my particular mounting situation, this will not be used.
got a somewhat of a diagram here. Now th this particular model, you can see the contour. I, I looked this up and I'm going to try to put this on the screen right now. I did see that on the internet, so I'm believing this is the most current version of the Starlink antenna. And then this obviously is the router. Um, I did notice on a video where someone plugged it in, turned it on, did all that, and they were looking at this and they're like, well, there's no lights. I'm not sure if it's working. I thought I saw something about the bottom of this. And I see right now that there's a little hole right there and I'm not sure if that's a LED light but I believe that's how you determine whether there's power in this after you plug it in and make sure that the, it's all connected. I believe that there's a light there, but I'm not sure. And we get, we get, I believe it's 75 feet of cable. I'm, yes, it's 70. I believe it's 75 feet. I had a couple numbers in my head. I remember measuring what I needed, and it was like 68 feet. But I believe there's 75 feet here. So if you need more than that, you should probably order it from the Starlink store. Apparently, that's the only place you can get this stuff. Then also, there's the power cord. Other than that, there's the general... Regulatory notices. Good Lord. So the very next thing I need to do is get up on the roof and uh, put some cameras up there so you guys can see how this gets put together. And then also I need to get all this equipment up there. I'm not sure what I'm going to lay this uh, antenna on. I'll probably wrap it in some big beach towel or something just to make sure it doesn't get all scratched up and hopefully it won't blow off the roof. It's not a very steep angle, but you know any angle walking on something like that is one that you have to be careful for, not slip and fall. Anyway, let's get started doing that. I think I just had a senior moment and I'm gonna share that with you. When I unboxed all of this, I it didn't dawn on me that there is no mount in here that actually I can attach the antenna to. So this, and you probably caught that because you're not a senior or you don't have senior moments, but this is what I unboxed that's called the flashing mount. And I'm thinking to myself, nothing about how to put this pole from the antenna into that until finally I start, I didn't get any further than my shed here to go up on the roof, but I started looking at the directions and it says you need a pivot mount also. So the pivot mount apparently goes on this cover and then that's where the antenna attaches to. Well, to get this kind of stuff from Starlink, you go on their website on the uh, Starlink application app and you order it and it takes over a week, sometimes two weeks to get something. And so this isn't gonna happen today. It's gonna happen whenever I get them out. I wanted to show you their website where I ordered this from, and it is a little bit deceiving. So this is what that looks like. It shows this mount here for whatever it is, $59. I'm not looking at it right now, but it shows that it's $59, I believe. and. It, it looks like that's everything. But if you look at the writing down below it, it says you it requires a pivot mount. Okay, didn't see that. I just saw that picture and ordered it. And you know what? It is what it is. It's gonna be at least two weeks, if not more, before that pivot mount arrives from Starlink. And what I'm gonna need to do is quite a few other things before that gets here. So I'm gonna go up on the roof today and I'm gonna to try to install this flashing mount. Cut a hole through the garage roof into the attic up there. 
go up, fish that wire through, get it into the house so that I can hook it up to my network, but I won't do that until I actually get the uh, mount. But this is what I've got prepared. I've got pretty much all the tools that I'm gonna need to go up on this roof. And as you can see that tower there behind me, that's, that's my way up. I crawl up there and I get up on the roof and it's pretty simple. Today I've got my hiking boots on so that I stay on the roof instead of slipping out of my slip-on shoes. I wanna make it to my 67th birthday. So I'll give you a, an idea of what I've all got in this bucket here that I'm gonna be hauling up there. So I've got this rope going up. I'll pull all this stuff up. I've got the mount. I've got some cameras, got some caulk. Drill gun is in there. A, uh, a hole saw, bunch of other stuff. Wrenches, screwdriver to pry up the shingles and I'm getting ready to go up there now and set the cameras up and start working on it. Well, I've got everything set up. It's a nice day, it's almost noon, so the sun's right above us. Hopefully you'll be able to see everything I'm doing. I've got a stud finder here. The instructions say that you're supposed to find the stud and we're going to be centering it on that and then moving it down to the edge of uh, one of the shingles. So I'm going to try to find that stud right now. I'm not sure how accurate this is. It says um, surface material thickness half inch, one inch, one and a half. And there are two sets of shingles on here. So it's gonna go through four sets of shingles plus a half inch or three quarter inch plywood. So I'm gonna set it to one and a half. I'm gonna get a marker and mark where I think it is. Get my marker right here. So I brought along a soapstone. So I have a general idea of where this is. They say they want that mounted there, but it's got to go under the shingles. I think that's what they're wanting right there. So when I put this on there, it's going to go underneath here all the way up. It makes sense, right? And it says not to cut the bottom layer of shingles. I just don't know why I would, yeah, I suppose I could see why. Yep, I'm gonna have to take this off. You know, it makes me wonder, they obviously don't know that I have a couple layers of shingles on here. What difference does it make?
if that were to go up underneath here. Like that. I mean, so what if there's a couple more layers of shingles under here? They don't know that. So that, I see that that would have to be plugged up there because otherwise water will get down into here. But everything else looks good. I want you to bend these up to get these screws in here too because there's there's one two three four five six and a seventh one up here so this is going to have to get bent quite a bit up in order to get that seventh one in there good lord i'm pretty sure that's what they want do i really need that seventh one in there at the risk of breaking that So if water came down and got in there, it would go underneath this plate and it would go on top of here and there's going to be a hole here. So obviously that needs to get cocked up right there, that hole. And then I'll put some underneath there and put in the uh, screws. Now, I don't know why they would have me put it right over a um a roof truss like that maybe i'll figure that out some other time i just obviously then when i drill the hole in i'm not supposed to drill it straight through and i'll put a i'll probably just do a drill first to see if it goes all the way through Write your comments. Let me know what you thought I should have done. Hopefully I'm going to do the right thing. Guess what that just did. Some tools rolled off the roof. Rolled right down here. That's a very old, very old patio table. And you know the worst part about it? I gotta clean it all up. Ain't going nowhere. That's for sure about that.
So this is an inch and a quarter. I've actually seen a YouTube video where a guy used an inch and an eighth and it worked. But I don't want to have to do this again. That's where I thought it was, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go here and Lord is this the right spot. <laughs> Looks like it is. I can see uh, it didn't hit a stud. Two layers. There we go. It's been about two weeks that I started that Starling project and now I'm getting back to it again today. And hopefully by the end of day, I'll have this up and running. I was waiting for one package from California, from Starlink. It's the actual pivot mount. My fault, I didn't order it when I ordered the rest of it. I didn't read far enough. And you know what? Starlink is billing me by the month right now for access to their satellites. And I don't even have anything set up yet, so it is what it is, right? But it's only been a couple of weeks, so I guess I get a couple of weeks on me. So I'm going to unbox this, get up on the roof, and try to finish this today. That's what I've been waiting for. Looks like you get a set of instructions. You get the mount, a couple of nice lag bolts if you're screwing it right into the roof, which I'm not. Some hardware. There's a wire fasteners. Nice box of them. This looks like some of that, um, I don't know what you call it, uh, it's like a rubberized uh, tape that you can seal stuff up with. Can't think of the technical name for it. Yeah, this stuff here. Sticky. And a nice cover to put over the Starlink and throw it over your shoulder when you're taking it up on the roof so you don't get it all scratched up.
That's what this is. So we'll get started. Now, before I forget to put this on, this is that goes on here to keep the bugs from getting in here. Now, that pivot mount needs to get put on here. I think it's seven sixteenths. Let's see, how am I gonna do this? I'm thinking I'm just gonna do this. Now, because it's going on an angle like this, I can't put it like that. I'm gonna to have to put it like that. And even it's got a couple arrows right here that say up. All right. Let's see if these are gonna reach. It looks like they are. There we go. This is the garage I'm standing on. So I don't recall what size hole that was again. I think it was one and a quarter, one and an eighth. Maybe one and an eighth, one and a half. And I don't have my tape measure. But that hole, that uh, connector fit through there. Anything smaller than that, the connector's so big it won't fit through there. So it's all tarred in. It's got this foam rubber on it to keep the bugs out. I think we're good to go. Now I brought up some of this. There we go. Well, let's see how this is going to fit. A little more. Uh. 
Uh, it's got to go in there a certain way. So. All right. Uh, how on earth? I think it goes like this. Yep. And the only reason I'm putting this black flexi hose on here is to try to keep uh, UV off of the off of the coax that's going down the you know the cable. So I guess it's not really essential, but I always like to do the best you can, you know. All right. Time to put these back in. And that's it. Well, by no means has this been a professional installation. And if I were to go back and do it all over again, I would tell the people that are going to do it that they should really take their time in figuring out what it is they need. That particular pivot mount, they show a picture of it just being drilled right into the roof. Okay, I guess that's, that's fine but I want my cord to go into the roof. And because of that, that's why I have this other mount on here. The other one that you just drill right into the roof, the cord lays outside the roof and then goes down the side of the roof or the building and then into the building. Project's not complete till that wire gets connected up. I've got a place where I've run other wires through the garage into the house. I'm gonna get it over to the router and then at the router, I'm gonna hook up the adapter that I purchased to get it hooked up to my network. That's my next project. Well, this is it. This is the moment I've been waiting for 15 months since I ordered Starlink. I've got this all connected. This has not got anything to do with Starlink right now, except there's a cord in here. When I plug it in, the Starlink's gonna activate. But what I did was I put the Starlink over there because my cord from my Starlink was about two or three feet too short. And I started thinking, well, you know what's probably better? This is so jammed up with wires. This is just uh, the ceiling going upstairs here. <clears throat> and when I plug the power into the Starlink, it'll activate. And I've got a camera on the roof right now to see how that works out. So let's plug it in and see what happens. So this is uh, the Starlink router. And I remember somebody saying, well, there's no lights turned on. I watched a YouTube video and I think the light is on the bottom. And there's the light. So that means there's power to the Starlink and the Starlink's probably doing something right now. So I have no idea what all that is. Maybe something comes up on there later, 
but uh, I'm going to go to my phone now and try to figure out from the app on the phone and uh, record that and see if anything's happening. Well, it's working. And this is what the speed tests look like. Now it's time to go up there and get that camera off the roof. Thanks for watching. I'm so happy that I've got uh, faster internet. Living out in the country, you know, it's it's rural. It's not like the Great North Woods, but uh, it was quite the quite the advancement here as well. Just having that. So, hey. God bless, be safe, thank you for watching.